So let's take someone with a random, with a random account, with a random name that just seems attractive. Play live online against the world's top chess players while they stream their thoughts live. As a Chess24 Premium member, seize the chance to have your moment of fame. Get a peek inside their lives with question and answer sessions, in-depth teaching, analysis and interviews. The Champions Chess Tour, with countless accompanying events, is happening now. Tune in on Chess24. Uh, hello, everybody, and uh, this is uh, yet another installment of Hanging Out with Tani. Uh, today will be really, really hardcore because uh, uh, Tani really wanted to do something else on the side while we're talking about chess, and I Don't did not have it. the heart to tell him no. So there will be weird pauses in the action when they, you know, during which Tani will be beating more people in a, in a different <laughs> window. Uh, and I have, you know, being an, uh, an obsessive watcher of live chess myself, I have actually opened Tiny's game in a different window so I can I can offer running commentary on something you cannot actually see, dear viewers. But uh, the idea for today was to uh, talk about dynamic uh, chess uh, and attacking chess in general. And I thought it might be fun I won. You just I won. yeah, you did. You did win uh, nicely played. You probably will at some point start playing opponents will, which will who will give you more trouble than than your opponent in that game. Yeah. Uh, so the idea was I, I I wanted to kind of go through uh, through a game with you which I played when I was fifteen. Uh, you that was way that old. was yeah that was that was thirty years ago by the way. So you're forty five. I am on not not just yet, but uh, will be Very this fun. year. And uh, uh, it's it's not my first ever victory over uh, over Grandmaster, but it's one of the one of the earlier ones. And uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, uh, go through the game uh, with you, ask you some questions about uh, key points, and just generally sort of discuss how you would view how you would you view the decisions. Uh, I had uh, then, and uh, uh, let's uh, let's start with that. Uh, okay, I mean, I, I can see I can see you're gonna be in the game, so I, I don't know I don't know how we're going to be proceeding with this. This is a bit of a risky setup. I'm 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 having th second thoughts on on your no uh, no I I can see the but I, I mean if 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 anyone can multitask those two things, it's probably you. Uh, so this this game uh, uh, was played against a Russian grandmaster who is now uh, a coach of the Russian youth. He does a lot of a lot of work with the youngsters, uh, nice. but doesn't really play, I think, anymore. Or at least I haven't really seen him play uh, much in the past. I don't know how many years. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Russian grandmaster called Sergei Akhipov who um, I had a lot of respect for in those years. But I mean, I, I generally had a lot of respect for grandmasters, obviously. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I was a 15-year-old kid. I myself was, I think, uh, a fresh international master at that point. I was not, was not anywhere near grandmaster strength myself. I was around probably like 24, 50-ish at the time. 
and uh, I mean, not a bad player by any means, but <clears throat> uh, still very much a work in progress. Uh, <clears throat> and in those years, I already, I, I at least I moved on from playing really, really sketchy openings, and I was playing one e four in pretty much every game. So uh, <clears throat> let's start with the moves. I played e four. My opponent played e six. Uh, and in those years, I played exclusively the knight d2 French. I don't know if you've ever played the knight d2 French. This I year. have played it a lot. I don't like... I. It's kind of risky to play e5 at times, because when black gets the attack going, it, it, I mean, yes, it is better for white, but it is uh, also, for me, when I look at it, it looks risky at times. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, 3 5 uh, for, for me, the question is, like, ideologically, 3 5 stands somewhat alone uh of course uh, this exists and uh you know being a lifelong friend of alexander grishuk i have uh looked at it with him and i looked at a lot of his games and uh, tried playing three five and i can probably still play three five if i really wanted to based yeah, on also the just for the views they know sure. what he means by three five or one four e4 he means the move number and uh Thank you. Uh, we we do hope that the, the 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 viewers in general would uh, would understand. But yeah, that's a that's a, an important clarification. So for me, I mean, the the big the big question is whether to play knight d two here or knight c three, and they lead to very very different things normally because knight d two in most cases, although as you will see in this game, not always, but in most cases, if you play knight d two, you should be expecting a kind of a positional struggle where. Uh, exciting things are less likely to happen and if you go uh knight c3 in particular in the bishop before lines you get like proper madness you get uh absolute <laughs> chaos on the board which unfortunately you also have to study for quite a bit it's not random chaos it's uh, it's chaos that still requires a lot of knowledge from you which is not my favorite kind of chaos honestly i uh if you know if i if, I actually kind of like dynamic, chaotic positions, but I prefer not to have to memorize things for days on end to play them. And yeah, I have comments on your on your current game, but I should restrain myself because only I can see your board and the viewers can't. So uh, I will. I mean, if they follow me, they will. Right now. Yeah, but I, let's not let's not overcomplicate the layout. Uh, so I did play knight d2, but in response, my opponent played a line which does allow for for some fun. I think after c5, there's very very little time to be fun to be had. But my opponent played knight f6. I played e5, uh, c3, c5, bishop d3, knight c6, and uh, uh, knight e2. <clears throat> knight e2 is uh, actually I didn't realize I played knight e2 in that game. I've I was kind of unaware of that because I, I knew how the game uh, continued and I just assumed I played knight gf3 here. Have you ever uh, looked at these lines uh, uh, for yourself, Tani? My internet is not that so good. Yes, I have looked at some of these lines. But I just I believe white is just better in this type of position. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. In particular, knight of three, uh, which is how you would normally I get. No, I think you. I think you go knight d f three. Yeah, knight d three. Knight d three also exists. Yeah, all of those things exist. Uh, yeah. But uh, the reason I'm mentioning knight f three is that uh, the old main line after knight f three was basically uh, this, and we will see this position in the game. But uh, the, the issue with knight of three right now is that black has uh, all kinds of really G5. weird... Op yeah, g5 in particular. g5 immediately, g5 on the next move. Like, you can also burn a tempo here, play something like bishop e7, or perhaps even some something stupid like a6. Yeah. And you can you can wait for white to castle and then play g5, then which is also <clears throat> maybe not entirely stupid. Uh, but apparently I played knight e2, and after knight e2, <clears throat> the main line here is, of course, takes, takes, and f6. Uh, and there's a lot of theory here. There's a lot a lot going on in this position which we don't need to concern ourselves with yeah. but uh for some reason my opponent played takes takes and queen b6 which is really not the main line uh okay. and here i took a decision <clears throat> i wonder what that decision was influenced by to be honest I, i'm not entirely sure because i i wasn't really normally playing that pawn sacrifice but I think maybe because I was a 15-year-old kid and I was playing somebody who was much older than me and much more experienced than me, I thought if I play knight of three, maybe his idea is to play check 
and then take and then play something like queen b4 and this will be an end game yeah this end game, this end game is really really nice for white there is absolutely no reason uh for white not to play this end game and be extremely happy about it uh yeah. because uh, the bishop on d3 is very nice and the bishop on c8 is very stupid but i have a feeling maybe i i just thought you know queen's coming off is not a very good idea for me in this game because i want to have fun and i want to to play a sharp game against somebody who might want to play a quiet game against me so i castled i, I those type of positions i just like to grind it out just like, so you you actually would enjoy this end game with white yeah well, perfect that's a that's a good sign actually i don't care if it takes 130 moves i'm gonna grind it out at least i win that's all yeah i think this is a it's a it's the correct approach it's just that it's very kind of refreshing for me uh to see this approach uh in in somebody as young as you are honestly because i think uh when i was your age i i mean if i had to play a better endgame i would play a better endgame of course because sometimes you have no choice yeah. but but like if i had any choice whatsoever i would prefer an unclear middle game to to a better end game so uh but um, i mean there are very good examples of people who are not as stupid as i am in this respect and you know the biggest of them is probably magnus who i think one of the for, I, I feel like for me the the kind of a, the turning point where I really thought uh, you know this kid will be extremely good was we were playing a tournament in in Foros in a small town in uh, in Ukraine I think it was 2000 maybe seven I want to say I'm not entirely sure I think it probably was like 2007 or something and maybe even earlier than that and Magnus won uh uh, a very, very dry, very, very equal, honestly. Where did our nut go? <laughs> I made a mouse slip. Okay. Um, he, he, he won an endgame uh, against Alexei Shirov, uh, which most people, I think, would just offer a draw in his position. Ah. In particular against Shirov, because Shirov is like genuinely one of the best endgames players in the world and has been at that time as well mm -hmm. and you you don't really expect to to even you know have much of a shot of winning that game and he just continued playing and playing and playing and eventually uh he started forcing small mistakes out of alexei and eventually the position became less less equal it was still a draw but it became less equal and uh it was sort of getting slowly worse and worse and eventually like somewhere around move 70 uh, a final mistake was made and he won that game wow nice. and i thought to myself you know if you can do this at his age against somebody who has vastly more experience of playing boring end games also uh, i made a comeback yeah i, I I'm, I'm i'm watching that and enjoying it yeah like once again i probably would have i don't want to say i would have definitely resigned in your spot but it looked like you could make an argument for resigning there but looks like you're you not resigning was was the better play <laughs> uh uh and yeah you're doing you're doing very well uh so yeah uh for me <clears throat> for me end games were even when i was 15 end games were not something i was very interested in honestly and uh i think maybe this influenced my decision of castling uh but also i i, I sort of had the idea that if black takes on d4 in this position we're doing quite well and uh in preparation for today's let's call it a lecture even though i mean it's not really a lecture we're having a conversation about chess you know if if anything uh i i actually asked the computer a little bit about uh okay if, let's yeah let's flag him <laughs> now that we're no longer actually winning let's at least flag him no i'm actually but we're back to winning but like that wasn't that was the clean, not not the cleanest ever conversion of an extra rook, Tani. I will I will tell you that. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, but what would you do after knight takes d four? Would you take? Yeah, this is this is what we'll come to because I was wondering if you ever if 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 you had ever seen this position before. Yes, I have. I've uh, played it many times, but I lost a couple of them. My and first, now I I got lucky. Yeah, I mean, my first ever experience with this position was. Um, very very negative i had it when in in a junior tournament when i was like 10 
and I, I lost very stupidly with white because at that time I didn't really understand what I'm supposed to be playing for. Uh, hmm. But by the time I, I got a to tournament or just a game. No, this is a this is a tournament in Gausdal in uh, in Norway, uh, nineteen ninety one. Gausdal is. I wasn't born then. Yeah, you 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 weren't born then. I I'm very aware of that. And uh, sadly, those tournaments don't exist anymore uh, yeah. because they were fantastic. You, I mean, it's a long way for you to go, but you would really really enjoy Gausdal if you ever got to play in those tournaments. They were run by this uh, wonderful Norwegian uh, gentleman called uh, Arnold Ikram, who is no longer with us. And this is why the tournaments basically got discontinued uh, because uh, Arnold died. And uh, they were, the conditions were like simply in terms of uh, money, they were not the richest tournaments in the world, but you were made so welcome there. And there basically every year he would hold I think four tournaments. There was one in the winter. Okay. Uh, there was one in April, and there were wow. two in the summer, one after each other. So, uh, so you, if you wanted to play in the summer, you could play two opens, two opens in a row, like eighteen days straight of uh, very strong Swiss opens. Oh, my first loss. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you were at some point you had some compensation there, but then it kind of collapsed. Yeah. And I think this was the summer tournament. In 1990, I only played one. And in 1991, I think I played three. Or maybe only the two, the two summer ones. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great pity that those tournaments disappeared. Because they were, they were definitely, in terms, of, in terms of atmosphere, they were maybe the, the best Opens I've ever played in my life. Uh, at least in the 90s. Uh, these days, there's a lot of very nice tournaments to play in if you want to. But in the, in the 90s, in terms of just like how how well you felt while while you were there, they were definitely my my most fond memories. Anyway, about this position, <clears throat> uh, the queen normally goes in that direction. I think if you go in this direction, the queen kind of on h5, it feels very very awkward. Uh, in fact, after like rook e1, already something like king h2 with a threat of g4 might be a problem for black uh, because the queen really has no squares. So the queen normally goes to either b4 or b6, and my opponent played queen b6. Um, so I mean, when I look at these type of positions, I'm like, is black just up a pawn? Yeah, this is this is the curious thing though, because I I assumed that uh, when I asked the computer today, because I didn't really want to lie to you about these things, so I kind of checked my my old impressions about this game with the machine, and I was shocked by how much the machine actually loves this for white what how uh, uh like three moves later and they are sort of the theoretical moves no real mistakes were made like by move 15 the machine says plus one and black blundered nothing by that point it's basically the same position slightly more developed uh because black is very cramped the bishop on c8 and the rook on a8 are uh sort of completely out of play and actually quite difficult to bring into play and white will gain a lot of time chasing the queen around, and then they can sort of occupy the the C file. The, like the machine likes the, the the plan. The machine likes the most. Let me just show you uh, a bit further down the line. After queen b six, what would you play? Okay, I understand you're playing the game, but like, what's what's the move that you are looking to make in this position? Um, rookie one. Or yeah, rookie one is normal, bishop but you, you... bishop out and. Uh, uh, A3 and B4 is the name. A3 and B4, <clears throat> all, of, all of the things that you're saying are very valid, but <clears throat> this is maybe why you think you're just a pawn down here, because... Um, uh, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. And, yeah, I, I, I don't know how well playing bullet and talking about this is, uh, is combinable, well, but the thing is, if you give black... Uh, Let's say I play a3, black goes bishop b7, I play b4, black goes castles. We play bishop b3, the queen returns to d8. I mean, the game is not <clears throat> good, but um, yeah. You, 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 still have, uh, you still have some compensation, but black managed to castle, uh, managed to kind of consolidate. No particularly bad things happened to them. And now they will start going like knight b6, knight c4, maybe, or a5 will be a source of counterplay. And we still haven't made very much progress. Uh, so what you need to be asking here, 
uh, is how can I make it as uncomfortable as possible for my opponent to finish development? Uh, um, I since he wants to get like development. Hmm. Apparently, I'm too old to understand time controls. Hmm. And yeah, calling this bullet was was just me being forty five. I will not say that word again. Mm -hmm. Uh. Since he wants to develop, I mean, I think a three and b four is the most logical idea. I don't see anything better. The the, the thing is, uh, there is actually a way. I mean, you you're not probably not going to prevent them from castling altogether, but there is a very <clears throat> typical idea that you should be aware of in these positions. Like, uh, imagine imagine we could sort of teleport the queen all the way to g four in this position. Uh, then, uh, I mean, then bishop f four, knight g five, and queen g four is an idea. Yeah, but you if can also you you can also do this. This is what I was kind of driving at. You can play queen a four oh. here, and if if black plays bishop b seven, we can go we can go queen g four, and already black has to take some very uncomfortable decisions because if you castle, obviously this is an exchange sacrifice. Yeah. Because you have to play g six here. And if you don't castle and play g6, we definitely have the option of playing bishop h6 and saying, yes, you can take on b2, but I don't really care about the b2 pawn very much because I uh, I would really, really be quite happy about not allowing you to castle. Uh, so queen a4 is, I think, the best move in this position and like the, uh, the, the absolute central move, which <clears throat> aims to stop black from... Uh, developing normally. Black plays queen before. This is what happened in the game. We go queen c2. Now, if black plays bishop b7. Game, right? Yeah, I, it, well, it says so on the screen. I probably should have removed the result, but too late now. Uh, if black plays bishop b7 here, I'm pretty sure we can actually take on h7. Uh, so black actually needs to think about this. And the main move in this position is queen c5, which is what my opponent played once again. And in that junior game that I mentioned earlier, the, my first ever time playing this uh, uh, this line with white, I actually stupidly took on h7 here. And then when the queens come off, obviously this is suddenly a very, very nice endgame for black because black has this wonderful passed pawn on d5. And, yeah. you know, the bishop can come out via a6. And... Uh, I'm still confused of how you won that. We'll we'll get to that. Don't worry. Eventually, eventually we'll get to that. Uh, but bishop takes h7 is a huge mistake. Instead of that, we play queen e2, and what we've what we've achieved by not playing queen e2 immediately uh, and uh, uh, doing this weird queen dance is that we get a much better tempo to play bishop e3 later, because with the queen on b6, if we compare uh, this position and this position, I can play queen e2 here, but after let's say bishop e7, bishop e3, black will have the option of playing bishop c5. And we will need to spend one more tempo avoiding avoiding the bishop trade because we don't really want to be trading pieces here. We want black to to have to solve a lot of issues of where to put put his stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So after queen e2, black played bishop e7. We played bishop e3. Uh, he played queen a5. Uh, and uh, first question here. Sorry, he didn't actually play bishop e7 for some reason. Apologies. Yeah, he probably should have played bishop e7, but he played h6 instead. Okay. Uh, which is a logical move, I guess, because as you mentioned, uh, ideas of like bishop f4 and knight g5 they do exist, and in general, not having to think about you know sacrifices on h7 later in the game, all of those things are valid reasons to play h6. But it's a very slow move. It's a move that doesn't really solve uh, the issues that Black has quickly enough. Uh, and uh, this is where uh, I would like to. Uh, sort of ask you, like, what do you think about this position? How would you continue here? Okay. Maybe rook fc1, just like um, hammering the position. Maybe. Yeah, you, you don't even need to care about the a2 pawn. This is this is actually like this is not the answer I uh, would have wanted before I checked this position with the computer, honestly, because I was very proud of my move. 
uh, during the game. I thought I was playing, you know, with great imagination and fan and the uh, like energy and vim and all these things. But uh, the machine just says whichever rook to c1. Rook a c1 is also fine because black really does not have time to take on a2. Uh, bishop okay. b7 and then just rook c3 castles and rook fc1. And uh, it, it evaluates this position as sort of borderline lost for black because mm. it's just going to be extremely difficult for black to finish development properly. And we have ideas of like just landing the rook on c7 and proceeding from there. But also eventually some bad things will start happening to the black king side. Like even this plan of bishop b1 and queen c2, if it happens, is going to be very, very painful for black to deal with. Uh, so I think the correct answer is what you said. The, like the the objectively objectively correct answer here is just play rook c1, double on the c file. Black is very very stuck. There's not very much they can do. That is, uh, I, I start to like the position better and better for life. Yeah, I think the I pawn think, doesn't really matter. At this point. Yeah, this is the thing. Uh, you you have to, and 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 this is something that uh, I think comes with this, with experience as well. Uh, you, you will lose the end game, obviously. If like if nothing happens, and queens come off and black gets developed, you will lose. Yeah. But it's until possible. that happens, other factors are vastly more important here than the the extra pawn that black has because uh, you are so much better developed and uh, your pieces are going to be so much more active for quite a long time here that. Yeah. I mean, the pawn doesn't re like we don't care. It's there. It's a uh, if you if you allow yourself not to care that you're a pawn down and you just continue playing uh, without really thinking about it, you will you will understand that we we don't really have to be worried about that at all. Uh, but the move I made here, as as mentioned, like rook c one, I think is stronger than what I did. But what I, I did also a makes a lot of sense. And I have uh, a question. sure, would this position be better if you like had f four? Or this is just fine. You for us, like for us, you mean? Yeah. For this is this is an interesting question, actually, because uh, like you are, are you asking just uh, sort of uh, hypothetically, or do you have a plan to to go with the question? No, I, I'm just asking. Would it be better? I mean, definitely it's a four, like five idea. Yeah, yeah. If we, yeah, but idea. also a four or five. If, if we do happen to play a four or five here, the, the black position probably will just fall apart. It's very likely that the black position will just completely fall apart. And this is actually the, the reason the reason I was wondering if you have a concrete move in mind is I played knight d4 here. What? And that uh and, and that actually has the uh at least one of the ideas is to start. Yeah, but don't you have a pawn? Uh have... let's calculate this. So what happens if black takes on e5? Oh, bishop d2. Yeah, we have. Be yeah, this is the the tactical justification for it. We go bishop d2, queen c7. We just go bishop f4 here. Bishop d6, you lose. Bishop d6, knight b5. We win the piece, right? We will f6? take on e6, then take on e5. What if f6? And if f6, at the very least, we have bishop, bishop g6 f6. check, right? And then we will just continue playing with the black king on d8. And once again, I'm never going to be unhappy about having forced king d8, right? I'm I'm just fine giving a pawn for this. It doesn't really bother me in the slightest. Like I can go rook c1 here and continue quietly because this is going to be a problem for the rest of the game. Black is just never going to be able to solve this problem. Yeah. So knight d4, uh, as, as mentioned, during the game, I was very, very happy with that move because I thought uh, I'm opening up the idea of playing a 4 or 5. And also I'm sort of reestablishing the idea of playing queen g4 if, if the bishop ever leaves, uh, leaves their fate square. Mm -hmm. And it did leave the f8 square. After some thought, my opponent played bishop b7 quite unhappily. I played queen g4. Uh, obviously, knight takes e5, queen takes g7 works out for us because the rook is hanging. Uh, and he played g6. Mm -hmm. So what do we do here? Okay, I'm thinking of sack ideas immediately. Just f4. Yeah, I think uh, this is exactly the thought, uh, the, the thought process I wanted from you. Like you look at, you, you, you absolutely have to check if maybe bishop takes g6 works already. Yeah. But I don't think it does because knight takes e5 right. happens, right? And it covers everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can, you can reinforce your position by playing a four, stopping those knight takes e5 ideas. And now I think bishop takes g6 is a huge big threat, obviously. Yeah. 
Uh, but Black plays knight c5, at least sort of reinforcing the pawn on e6 and saying, "Now, is it is know, it maybe... time? Is it time, or do we have to wait for?" for I think Momo? it's time. Yeah, it is just it? feel it, it feels like it's time, right? Maybe it feels like we. It feels like we shouldn't really be giving uh, our opponent more time to to bring pieces into play, like, right? If he like, if you move your bishop back, then he has ninety four. He has ninety four. He has like h five, rook g eight ideas. He I think he it's might time to... he might start looking to maybe castle queen side. Yeah, I think yeah. it's time to take. So what happens if rook g eight here? Probably F many things happen, but like. F5 the, F five is an idea, but I think Bishop takes F seven is simpler. Honestly, I think this is just yeah. This Bishop looks yeah, and then that's the then... difference between the pawn and F two and F four. Exactly, yeah. And I was when you asked me suddenly, you know, when you asked me in this position if I wanted the pawn on F four, I I really thought like I I found a spiritual brother there because I thought you were going to suggest knight D four, but apparently yeah. apparently not 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 quite. Anyway, so I took on G six. My opponent took because Rook G eight just completely loses. Uh, I took, and he played king d8. Uh, so, I mean, you could just blast with f5. Right yeah. Uh, and you have queen g7 ideas. Yeah, we have queen g7, queen takes like six ideas. And, uh, and interestingly, interestingly, like for me, I, I think during the game, I didn't even consider anything apart from the move f5, honestly. Because it felt to me that, like, we, we, think, we need... Go yeah, on. you can't let him develop his pieces. Like yeah, we absolutely, we absolutely have to play. We have, we, we have to play very, very quickly here. We we, we cannot give uh, give our opponent any time to uh, to get his stuff together. But uh, kind of remarkably, because honestly, my memory of that game was that my play wasn't very clean, and that the position wasn't so clear. But I did manage to somehow prevail in in complications around the first time control. But it turns out I only really made one mistake in that game, starting from maybe move 15, and that mistake will come later. Uh, and f5 is completely fine, and also this position is apparently completely winning for white. Uh, it's and already f5 is, is one of the good moves here. But I was, kind of I was kind of shocked. I was kind of shocked that you. Yeah, I was you thinking about Rick C1 the whole time. Yeah, I should. I should be. I should be giving you more voice because it was quite remarkable to me that yeah, the, the engine says. He, and honestly, I shouldn't be that surprised about this because when I do commentary, this concept of we are currently a, a, a full piece down, well, I mean, for, for one pawn, but we are a piece down. But black has these two pieces, which aren't really participating in the game. The bishop on c8 is sort of participating in the defense. The rook on a8 is completely out of play. So if you count the pieces which actually are active participants in what's happening on the board, you can make an argument we are an exchange up because all of our pieces are playing and he has a rook which will probably like, just, if you take his rook out of the game it just it doesn't change the game at all yeah pretty much like uh, it's it's very likely not to not to ever move in this game and kind of finally yeah, it got can... It, it it will it will get traded later in the game in a very funny way, but <laughs> uh, I but think in, I see it now. But um, yeah, uh, probably not. It's uh, it's some way it's some way in the future and in a very funny way. But yeah, after Rook C1, basically Black is completely tied up. Eventually, we will play F5, and eventually the Black position will just start think, com completely think, falling I think apart. You rushed with F5. Wait, sorry. Yeah, you can... F5 is still is still not a mistake, but. Uh, it does give it does give black some hopes because of course you cannot allow f6 so black takes and uh, what do we play here this is where it gets slightly trickier this is where uh my questions will maybe become a little bit tr trickier for you hopefully i really want to go rook 6 <laughs> yeah i i, I like your h6 i like your enthusiasm but uh yeah. Here, here, actually, the machine agreed with my with my over the board choice, and uh, you, you haven't named it yet. The thing is, th there's there's a lot of moves here which are okay. I'm pretty sure that the moves you Rook F5 honestly looks slightly over ambitious to me because, uh, I mean, what are we trying to? Knight F5. Knight F5. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Honestly, even this looks extremely scary for Black. Now that I look at this position, it looks. 
it looks very, very like frightening. One is coming that deep. Yeah, but we can maybe go something like Queen A6 here, Queen G7, Rook E8. Rook D1? Rook D1, maybe I have Queen E6. Maybe I sort of started stabilizing a little bit with black. It's not yeah, as, as horrible. And and you did give away a full rook there. Like we, we giving uh, not only not only do you give away uh, an additional bunch of material, you're also trading uh, a rook on f1, which is quite an active piece. It's a nice piece. It does things. You're you trading it for the d4. bishop. No, you, you, you uh, you're trading it for the bishop on c8, which really isn't doing very much. This is the part about this sacrifice which I don't like. Because I think for black to be able to do something with this bishop on uh, on c8 is excellent, excellent, excellent news. Go go ahead. Rook d1. Rook d1, Rook d1 is probably probably leads to uh to the same positions that I got in the game, but that actually I shouldn't have said that because that's a bit of a hint. Uh, but you still haven't mentioned the movie six, which is uh, a bit surprising to me because that to me looked extremely logical. I remember that during the game because we want to be taking on a five and we want to take on a five in such a way that the, the piece cannot be recaptured. Uh, like if you imagine my, like if black passes here and we just take on a five with the knight, the game pretty much ends because that knight on a five will just completely dominate everything and the black position will absolutely fall apart so i thought e6 was was very very logical and i was waiting for you to to suggest it um so let's look at this from the other side because i'm, I'm sure like like most people i i, I, I assume had e6 in the mind but it didn't look right why too slow mm -hmm. or like what's your you what's your objection yeah I, I understand and this is this is why like, this game yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm very happy this is the first question you asked because I was going to say, you know, most people like attacking much more than defending, but let's let's see you have to defend this position. What's the first move you think of? And mm -hmm. Queen A6 absolutely is the best move for black. Uh because you want to have the the option of taking on E6 with the queen here. Yeah, which is uh I'm not sure oh, I mean But do you just go like uh, never mind. Queen knight takes E7. Now the seven queen e three exists, unfortunately, for us. Oh, ah. yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, the the thing is, we are not forced to take on a five straight away. Uh, and uh, if you if you consider this position, there are there are other options. Uh, you can you can do other things as well. And this is where uh, one of the one of your suggestions in the previous position is so uh, is so valuable for me because. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not. It's if if I ask you for other moves, other moves to make in this position, you probably should uh, should f name some good suggestions. Apart from knight of five, like what else can we play? You could go rook six, knight five. Yeah, you can, you can go rook at five, but then you have once again you have to calculate. These lines, I guess, right? Because the bishop takes e6, we've protected the pawn on d5, and the rook is now hanging. We we have some rook e5 ideas, but black actually starts connecting uh, connecting his pieces a little bit. It becomes tricky. It might still be quite good, but it becomes very tricky and becomes very very sort of like non the, non obvious that we are winning. And like the worst part is that you don't even have queen g7. Yeah, you like you 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 never you never really have queen g7 there because bishop f6. Uh, always and happens. You yeah, probably, yeah, and because like ninety six, I for a second there I thought this still works, but unfortunately for us, I mean, yeah, this move exists. And you know, the more we the more we talk about this position, the more I think you should be coming uh, to 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 certain conclusions here. Like our our issue is, first of all, we don't want black to be able to take twenty six with the queen. And also, we, we still very much would like to be able to take on a five with the knight ourselves. We don't really want to be taking with the rook. We, if queen at all G7? possible, what? Queen g seven. Yeah, queen g seven is possible. But if you don't have an immediate victory after rook e eight, what you do by playing queen g seven is you give black. You basically force black to make a move he probably wants to make anyway. Because the rook is no longer hanging on h8, it's also protecting the bishop on e7 for the for the future. 
it makes your opponent's position look tidier, you know, better than it looked a second ago. And that normally when you're trying for a sacrificial attack where you want to give mate, that's not a very good good idea to oh, give black. I think, um, can you go back? I, B4. Yeah, we can go before, but I'm I'm sort of I'm I'm curious why why you suggested rook ad1 here, and you're not suggesting rook ad1 here. Uh, uh, same thing. Oh, it's it's basically the same thing because uh, by playing rook ad1, what we are achieving is we're bringing another piece into play. We are. I mean, it's obviously the square on which the, either d1 or c1 is where this rook is supposed to be in this position. It's yeah, quite obvious. Also, bishop cannot take on e6. Right? Yeah, bishop can take on e6, but mm -hmm. but when when I bishop take takes five. on e6, uh, what do we do here? Knight takes a five. Yeah, we can play knight takes a five, and we have actually sidestepped the biggest issue we had in the previous position. We did not want the queen to get to e6. We did not want the queen to control the f6 square. Uh, yeah. So what we've achieved is we force Black to take this pawn with a piece he probably did not want to take it with, and we brought another another piece into the attack here. So now even the very simple knight takes e7 is a huge threat. If Black takes on f5, I assume pretty much every move wins, but I guess queen takes f5 is the simplest, and the pawn on d5 will fall next move, and then the Black king will never have any kind of safe uh, safe haven anywhere. Uh, so after knight f5, black played rook g8. Uh, what's our move here? Hmm. Queen h7. Yeah, queen oh. h7 is uh, queen h7 is correct. Yeah. Uh, bishop f8, and this is the position in which I made my one huge mistake of the game, but it should have cost me half a point. And uh, it's not really, uh, you know, a proper puzzle uh, because uh, there are many strong moves in this position. But uh, let's try and figure out what you would have, what you want to play here. I'm not going to criticize. Like, there's no, there's definitely a wrong answer, and that's the move I made. <laughs> but uh, there is more than one correct answer. But like, what what do your instincts? Uh, uh, tell you here. What, what would you play? I think. Well, yeah. Let's let's not talk about white moves for 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 a while yet. Let's talk about this position in general. We're a full piece down. Uh, yeah. Black Black has a king on d8, which is obviously a huge target. Uh, and black has a rook on a8, which is not really playing. But if you allow something like rook c8, rook c7, you're probably in trouble. So we ha obviously we have to play extremely quickly, like quickly in terms of creating threats with every move. We cannot really make you know waiting moves here. We we have to be we have to be energetic. Uh, uh, and uh, that's sort of one side of the equation. The other side is uh, trying to consider uh, what possible counterplay black can have yeah. apart from apart from rook c8 c7 what else uh what else can black do which might be awkward for us oh taking in queen g6 taking probably loses to queen takes g8 though i don't think oh. black can sort of ever take on a5 just yet the issue with that is like it it, it probably always loses to queen takes g8 ah, queen and, like, c6 and d4 we see some d4, but there's also this queen e2 move, right? Which is oh, yeah. kind of annoying because it's surprisingly difficult to, to react to it in a good way. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there is a question of what the, what the absolute best move uh, is in this position. And there's also, as I was looking through the notes, there's also... Uh, uh, Bishop F8 is computer's second choice in this position. Computer thinks we are winning, but uh, it suggests that Bishop D6 is a better defense uh, this is why than. Computers are computers. Yeah, Bishop D6 is a better defense than Bishop F8. And in this position, uh, I just wanted to uh, show you. I'm not even going to ask you what the best move here is because I think. Uh, 
Yeah, there's a lot of forcing moves we can make here. Like Knight H6 exists. Uh, the yeah, but here, when I saw what it suggests, uh, it suggests we should play, uh, I was kind of shocked. And then I thought, this is quite remarkable how uh, you can you can sort of explain in human language uh, even the most well, not in every case, but here, uh, if you if you take like half a minute to try and understand why it suggests what it's suggesting, uh, there is a very clear explanation which you you can actually uh, define in human terms. As I mentioned, probably the biggest idea Black has here in terms of counterplay is queen e2. And the computer thinks for a while and actually goes bishop e3, f2 in this position. And what this move does is it completely kills dead the idea of ever playing queen e2 because it no longer threatens anything. And we will just take the bishop on d6 and win. And it also, like as an additional bonus, we will have the option of playing bishop h4 check. But mainly, I think, it wins because it just stops the only real source of counterplay that Black has. And I was very, very impressed when I saw Bishop F2 here. And uh, the best uh, the best that Black yeah. has here is Knight E4. And here the victory, the, the, like the, the most efficient way to win this position is kind of uh, annoyingly, uh, uh, annoyingly materialistic. We take on D6, Queen takes D6, and what do we do here? Queen takes e4? Yeah, we just take on no, e4. No, how? No way. And this is completely winning because this endgame is not really an endgame. This endgame is kind of, we, we, we give mate pretty much because the, the king never actually becomes safe. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh because, I, because of how I strong our rooks is. Like after rook c8, we just go back yeah, to a3. And then and then everything starts collapsing because of how how poor this king is on e seven. But yeah. going back to Bishop F eight, I don't know. Like once again, I, I I know what the best move is, and I think the second best move is somewhat counterintuitively. I think knight knight f five d four, if I remember correctly. Once again, probably stopping queen e two is the main idea for that. But there is a forced way uh, to win here, and that is apparently Bishop takes h six. Wow. Which is yeah, which is a curious, uh, curious idea. <clears throat> I guess <clears throat> the point is now if Black plays Queen e2, we have Knight g3 because the the Bishop is no longer hanging on e3, and we can win the Bishop on f8 next move. Uh, and if he takes on g3, we make. Yeah, and, they, and that that loses. But instead of that, uh, I remember we were both probably in some time trouble, and I didn't really uh, feel. Uh, very, you know, comfortable. Uh, I thought the bishop was kind of doing well on h on, on e three, and I didn't have much time to calculate. <clears throat> so I played knight takes h six instead so of bishop takes h six, which is also sort of logical. If black plays queen e two, there is a cute solution here. So what I mean, apart from the fact that we can probably win just by taking on oh, g eight, bishop g5. yeah, bishop g five check is very very nice here. Uh, because of, of course you cannot take, and ne next move we just take on g8. But unfortunately for us, after bishop h6, queen h6, uh, black has a defense here. Like this is for for one move, my opponent could have made a draw in this game. Rook takes g2. No, rook takes g2 doesn't. This I wouldn't have blundered. Rook takes g2 doesn't actually oh, king uh, solve solve the issues because I think we are running away. I think maybe. Uh, let me figure out how. King h1 and you win. Oh yeah, just just King h1. There are no more checks, right? It's not even very difficult. Uh, so how how do you make a draw here with black? Oh, uh, we're still down a piece. Uh, 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 I think I saw it during the game, but I I I I felt like there must be mate somewhere because. Black kind of needs to start allowing uh, some things, but there is no mate. Okay, so then just queen e2 straight up? Yeah, queen e2, I go g3. And, and bishop h. Bishop h3, you, you're giving up on d5 with a check. That probably is not going to... Oh, and well. And also queen d6 check. Yeah, it feels like it's probably going to collapse. I didn't check it properly, but I don't think it's the solution. Okay. What can it be? 
Well, currently the like seems like everything is hanging, and I think during the game I felt like, well, uh, sort of, you know, I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm playing logically, so it should work out for me. But as a matter of fact, Black can just play ninety four in I this know. position. Yeah, and surprisingly, there is no way for uh, for me to make progress quickly enough because. Oh. And if uh, you make a blunder, you could get made. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you or can. Or you could lose your queen if you take on e6. Take on e6 is still a draw. Uh, yeah, but we can I take mean, on e6 and king then h1. and then go king g2 and Only this is. Only if a... you go king h1. Yeah, but king h1 does lose. Yeah, because of knight takes g3. Oh, you, you're absolutely correct, and the queen gets lost. And unfortunately for me, there is absolutely nothing. Uh, absolutely nothing we can do about this. Uh, you can continue playing with something like rook d1, but then the queen. Uh, rejoins the defense uh, via and, like these squares, and it gets gone. And if White tries too hard, to, if White try, wait a second, if White tries too hard to try to make something up, you could lose. You're down. Yeah, you 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 definitely you definitely could over overplay your position here and lose for sure. Uh, I probably would have taken uh, taken the draw here with Queen takes g six if that happened, but. Yeah, that would have been a very sad end to a, to a game I was playing quite well. But so, uh, instead, my opponent played knight e4 without including queen e2. I don't know if he was playing for a win or if he miscalculated he something here. But um, what did his facial expression look like? That was 30 years ago, Tiny. <laughs> Do you think I remember? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no. Uh, no. And... Uh, this position is actually winning for white uh, in a in a very specific way. Just queen eight, no, 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 just queen h four. Queen h four. The king, I guess, goes to e eight, probably. Queen h four is a is a good idea because clearly you are yeah. sort of sort of on the right track. You want to pick up this knight because of the pin, but I think after king e eight. Uh, yeah. Queen a, Queen H five. We can go to maybe. I should have checked this because this really looks very strong. Honestly, why isn't this if you winning? If D eight, there's also Rook takes D five. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to think why is the, why isn't this winning? Actually, why this looks this, this looks very winning. <laughs> why isn't why isn't Queen H four winning? Maybe it's also maybe it's also winning. Maybe maybe my my win wasn't uh, wasn't the only one. But mine is. I I'm I'm still very happy about it because. It includes one piece of calculation, which I, uh, when I got to that point today, when preparing this for for our conversation, it still oh, gave me, it still okay. gave me a smile when I when I saw that line. So I played rook f8 check. Since I can't really refute your line, I'll just show you what I did because I honestly I think maybe your line is completely fine. Maybe queen h4 is just winning. I played rook f8. Uh, if black takes. And goes king d7. The thing is, I think I can take the rook. Because after queen e2, what happens is uh, we take on b7. And yes, our things are hanging. But eventually, either we will be able to give a check with the bishop and then play rook f1. For instance, like here. Or if the king goes back, what's the simplest way here? Um, Once again, it's it's not really... Fine. Yeah, Bishop G5 wins, but what I want you to, uh, what I kind of expected you to say is this idea of uh, picking up all the pawns with checks. Like if uh, we've just taken on B7 with check, and we can also take on A7 with check. We can go Queen A8 check, and then we take on A7 with check, and now the bishop is not hanging. So we can just go Rook F1 next move. So that's sort of the most practical solution in these types of positions. You just don't have to think about anything. You just... Pick up everything with checks, defend your pieces, and win. Uh, but the interesting, the interesting question is comes after king e7, which of course is the square. If the king goes to let's say d7, we can start chasing it with queen h7, chasing it towards the queen side where it probably gets mated. So the king always goes here, and here, as I mentioned, like uh, the, the rook on the eight actually gets traded. Uh, I uh, <laughs> I did tell you the rook will eventually disappear off the board. Oh my. But probably not in the way you would think. And here is really the, the last somewhat difficult puzzle of the day. You have to tell me how we win after Queen E2. Uh, 
I think there is more than one solution, but only one solution which actually wins on the spot so that you don't have to kind of... Black just resigns if you play correctly here. And there are some other ways to play which uh, result in uh, uh, in like a plus one position, some kind of a better end game, which we don't want. Yeah. We want to We want to end the game here. I mean... Well, everything is hanging with mate, right? G4 is hanging with mate, D1 is hanging with mate. So we probably have to start giving checks. Like logically, it feels like we probably are going to going to have to start giving checks in this position, right? But which checks? I'm back. Yeah, yeah, I I can see him. Let's try and uh, talk this talk this through. Okay, so Queen H7 is a move. Queen H7 is definitely a move, but probably after Bishop F7, it becomes tricky. Bishop C5 is a move. Uh, can I get your bishop just to trade off? Yeah, but I don't know what that achieves, right? I think they can take. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what we've achieved. Feels like we've just given away a bishop. Then, which move we did not mention yet? Queen H4. Okay, so why do you not like Queen H4? If we why go, like it or not? yeah, if we like, but if we go through the possible black replies here one by one, what worries you? Knight F6. Yeah, Knight F6 is like the biggest worry, and why why are you not worried about King D7? No. Yeah, because exactly now we go king king and we go queen h7 and bishop f7 no longer exists. And as I mentioned, like if we if we start chasing the king in that direction, we will have rook c1 check, and probably it ends up getting mated somewhere on the queen side. So knight f6, and now you have to find a three move sequence in this position which wins. And I think here it actually is the only three move sequence which wins. Bishop c5, queen a4. No, bishop c5, I think it goes in that direction. In g7, queen a4, you probably give mate. You're right, yeah. How are we doing? Uh, oh, rook d2. Oh, okay. Yeah, rook d2, there, there's a number of problems with it. I think the main one is that rook oh. takes g2 is mate, so. I think queen b4. Queen b4, I think it, it runs here, right? And, uh... You're stuck again. Ah, oh, but there's a... And there we kind of get stuck. We no longer really have any any sensible yeah, checks. Go back, go back. Mm -hmm. uh, after queen d4 and king f7, I think there's a few drop. Queen d2, rook takes g2, and you just uh, no. But the issue with queen d2 is I can take on d2 and then take on a8. Oh. We've we've actually lost, right? Yeah. Yeah, I had a feeling this one might be might Wait, be quite. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure. Yeah, it out. yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gi giving you any hints, but. Yeah, th this one, as I mentioned, thirty years, thirty years later, I'm still very happy. I was able to calculate it during the game. Hmm. It's a, it's a nice combo. Number twenty in the world. Hmm? Every year you get. Well, it depends what you're writing here. Okay, what is this? This is tricky. Yeah, it is. It is. 
because it features it features a very strange move which you don't often see this this type of a tactic Bishop G5 Bishop G5 I mean Divan is hanging with check right so that can't really be right you you know you 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 can't start oh, the solution we're getting closer. You you kind of have to fine tune that a little bit. Oh, bishop c5, king f7, and rook f8. We got there. Ah! This is a and and then rook e1. Actually, rook f1 is cleaner. Rook 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 e1. I think black might survive, but rook f1 rook f1 is just completely winning okay, because that is, that is crazy. It is it is a very nice combo, right? Yes, it is. It still it still really brings a brings a smile to my face because I uh, it's seeing the move rook f8 check in game is is quite is quite a satisfying feeling when you spot this tactic and I definitely saw that when I was uh, when I was yeah, playing like the game. Yeah, the rook came from a1 to d1 to d8 to g8 no to f8. Then rook a and then rook a f eight. Yeah, and like game. using using your own rook on on your opponent's back rank like this is quite unusual. So and I, also, I think I think my opponent also calculated that. So he played rook takes a eight, and this yeah. is simpler. Actually, from here on out, I expect you to to be able to find it. I think rook f eight is by far the most difficult kind of a puzzle in this game. So what do we do here? I have a comment because in the when sure. you when the rook f eight thing. Um, the best part is about that the rook on a1, it was like the knight on d4 is gonna win the game, the pawn on f5 is gonna win the game, the queen was gonna win the game, but just the silly rook on a1 won the whole game. Well, it's it, it, it came from h1 actually, but yeah, the point stands <laughs> it went h1, f1, f8, a8, and then back to f8, yeah. And That's and that cute. final that final blow wins the game, so rook a8, rook a8. This one, this one is simpler. So how do we win this? It's sort of the same, the same motive here that we've been G7 discussing. And rook F1. Hmm? Yeah, G7. but <coughs> sorry, but you probably don't want to be connecting the black queen to things, right? What you mm -hmm. what, what you do by playing queen G seven is you give the black queen the e six, the G six squares, all of those squares, which you probably don't want to be giving. Okay. And we we have seen like the starting move very. But what about Bishop G five? I think we're kind of running out of attackers here a little bit, right? No, I I have a line that might work. Uh, go on. Queen G seven. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work. No, we we stay on the G seventy six squares. I have a feeling this is probably a draw. We, like I think Black probably after Queen G three check is supposed to accept the perpetual. We're not losing, but. We would like to win. We don't really want the perpetual here. Yeah, yeah, that makes definitely. So we, we we've seen this idea of how oh, to queen h seven. Queen h seven once again oh. after bishop f seven. We're this is the issue. We've we've had this before, Tiny. We don't really want to allow bishop f seven, and there is a way to oh, rock f one. But rock f one. You you're allowing the 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 a8 rook to uh, join the game a little. Like after rook g8, the king will oh, start running H towards safety. Queen h4. Yeah, I think you, you you really have to go back to this, right? You play queen h4 check. Uh, after knight f6, no oh, surprise, rook. no surprise. We can still do this. We don't even have to sacrifice a rook for it. Oh. And then the bishop. I wish you went rook f1 first, so that if rook f8. Yeah, bishop d5. Yeah, that actually is maybe. Yeah, I I think you're right. Because if the bishop moves, then bishop d4, and you get. Or even rook f6, bishop g5. This is more stylish. I agree with you. Yeah, you get it. This is more stylish. And after king d7, you can already win the knight back. But there is even a cleaner solution. Queen h7. Yeah. Now we go. And now no bishop f7. Yeah, because bishop f7 no longer exists. And after king d6, you can take on e4. You can also probably give mate with bishop f4 check. I think it's probably mate. My opponent played king c6. And now I think you will, in particular, because all of these moves are sort of only moves, you will find the entire sequence quite easily. So what do we play here? Um, 
Uh, Rook C1, obviously, we, we, we play this. Uh, A4. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We play A4 because if the queen takes, we have queen takes B7. And if king takes, we win the queen on A6 and completely winning position king A5. And now, what's the blow? The finishing blow is queen C7. No? Queen C7, B6. And now, bishop D2. Oh, this is I think it's maybe a little bit too early. It's probably still winning, but I think it's ma five. mate in six. The way I played it, it's mate in six here. So, so then B4. Yeah, we start with by playing before. Uh, after king takes before, we do this. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, I thought bishop D. No, go back. I have. Yeah, to and uh, we can we can oh, probably okay. also do this. Yeah, bishop D2. Yeah, that. This but I think rook B1 is actually kind of faster. We go rook b1 because if, if the king goes forward, we, we mate it from this direction. And after king a1, you've, you've already said king bishop d2, so that's not very difficult for you. And the king gets mated on the a4 square. Yeah. Uh, oh, queen a1 is a better checkmate. Yeah, yeah. once again, you are you are winning the style points there. Yeah, queen a1 yeah, is, queen a1 the, is the way to go. A1. It just represents. Yeah. So right. that's, uh, that's the game. And... Uh, I still I still remember it quite fondly, even though it it, it does have mistakes in it, and it's uh, you know it's not a perfect game by any by any means. And my opponent definitely did not play at least the first part of it all that well. It was still a very very pleasant feeling to uh, to have won a game like this against somebody who was much more experienced and generally probably just better than me at that time. Uh, and also I I hope I I I maybe manage to tell you some of the ideas of uh, sort of how to continue attacking when you have to continue attacking. So uh, that sort of concludes the the teaching part for today. Uh, there will be probably, as usual, some homework about which I know nothing, and please don't blame me. And uh, as usual, very nice, very nice hanging with you, and uh, I hope we continue doing this in the future. Can we play a game to end it, or you don't have time? What? Can we play a game to end it, or you don't have time? Uh, where, how? I, I don't think, we, the, the issue with that is that, I mean, we can definitely play sort of off stream if you want, but I don't think we can stream it, because that would require, uh, like, okay. completely, completely changing the overlay. But yeah, we can definitely play uh, after yeah. we're, we're off air. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, th uh, thanks for watching uh, to the people who hopefully were watching. And uh, next one probably is uh, in March, I think. The plan is for the next one to be in two weeks. Uh, cheers, everyone. And yeah, I'll, I'll go play some chess against Tani. That should be fun. Bye-bye.